Hi. Hi. In the last video, uh, I hope you might have understood about the term genetics. I just gave an introduction on the term genetics. The genetics deals with two aspects, inheritance and variation. In today's video, we shall learn about a great personality related to genetics. Or I must say, he is regarded as the father of modern genetics. Yes, some of you might have got his name in your minds. It is Gregor John Mendel. Gregor John Mendel is regarded as the father of genetics. But then you might ask, is he a botanist? Is he a scientist? No, not at all. He was basically a teacher. A teacher in a monastery. He belonged to parents of a very poor family. He belonged to a very poor family. His parents were actually farmers. They had a farm of their own, but they were very poor. They were not uh, rich enough to send him to school and teach him. But then one of his, uh, one of the teachers over around there found his aptitude in learning, his curiosity in understanding things and compelled his parents to send him to school. And then he was sent to a school where he did his basic education and then he joined the monastery there itself. After joining the monastery, he was asked to do some work that is related to uh, giving importance to or taking care of uh, sick ones and all such people. But he was actually not interested in that and he himself became ill in doing such kind of work, taking care of the, the, the dying ones, taking care of the sick ones and all. He himself became ill and so the monastery decided him to post him in some teaching areas. Then there was some uh, some vacancies in the teaching field and uh, in his in their monastery, and he was asked to take out take a, take over that work of teaching. So he became a teacher. He was teaching, and his teaching was very interesting. His he was a very successful teacher, but then he didn't have a degree for teaching. He was not qualified for teaching qualified in the sense he didn't have a certificate for teaching and then the, the monastery decided to give him an examination but he failed in that examination to get the certificate of teaching but since he had a very good very good aptitude or interest in teaching and his teaching was very 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 excellent the monastery decided him to uh, to, to, to allow him to take a degree in teaching or the monastery sent him to the University of Venia. There he had a very good time. He had, a, he had relationships with Doppler. You might have heard about Doppler effect from where he learned mathematics, physics and also he also learned about plant physiology, anatomy and all. So from Venia for two years he spent his time in learning many things. Then he came back to the monastery and he took over the charges. And then started the real mentor. After he took, came to the monastery he was given the name Gregor. Before that his original name is John Mendel. When he joined the monastery he was given the name Gregor. So he is commonly known as Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel. Now, let us come to our topic. I was telling you about inheritance, isn't it? In the last video I told you about inheritance. It means characters are passed on from parents to progeny. Characters are passed on, that is okay. But that was a mystery. How this was happening? 
what was the basis of transmission of characters from parents to progeny nobody knew there were many many theories but not so satisfying gregor did not actually think about this but accidentally he was during his leisure time he was growing pea plants but he was not simply gardening the pea plants he was making things recordical he was actually investigating not for investigate not for investigation but for, as his hobby he was doing so and he kept on those that mathematical and statistical things as he was doing the pea plant let me make you make it more clear to you he took garden pea plant scientifically it is known as pisum sativum scientific name pisum sativum so he his experimental material is what garden pea plant this is his experimental material he actually experimented for 7 years from 1856 to 63 sorry 1856 to 63 he experimented for 7 years in which plant in garden pea plant pisum sativum actually was he doing some experiment no not intentionally but he was making things recordical as a scientist was he was doing because of his base that he got from university of vienna under doppler where he took mathematics physics plant physiology anatomy and all as a subjects now for conducting this he was doing he was actually collecting true breeding plants true breeding plants see here the term breeding let me explain to you in brief what breeding means here the breeding is referred to as artificial hybridization have you heard about that most of you might have but then i'll just explain to you in nutshell you know plants are having flowers flowers have the reproductive parts called as uh, the 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 stamen and the pistil the stamen has pollen grains pistil is having stigma when the pollen grains are put on the stigma manually or artificially we call it as artificial hybridization if it is happening naturally we call it as pollination pollen grains are put on the stigma from there the pollen grains go down grow down as a tube and they go and they fertilize isn't it now if the pollen grains are picked up and put on to the stigma manually or artificially it is called as artificial hybridization or breeding artificial breeding okay mendel also did breeding and through breeding he got what true breeding plants now what is true breeding plants see i told you pollen grains are taken and put on to the stigma isn't it if the pollen grains are taken from a flower and put on to the stigma of the same flower you call it as self pollination the flower is getting pollinated by its own pollen grain that is called as self pollination got it so when the self pollination is done after few days the flower becomes a fruit from inside the fruit you can get the seed the seed was again sown and the type of plant that is coming out from the seed was actually judged by mendel he found that after many years of doing this self pollination the the progeny plant progeny means i told you the offspring the new plants that are coming out look exactly like the parent plant so true breeding plants means what plants having stable trait inheritance stable trait inheritance what is this trait trait means character if you have plants coming out from the seed which exactly look like the parent you call them as true breeding plants 
Okay, let us rewind. Mendel took garden pea plant, scientifically known as Spicum sativum. What kind of garden pea plant did he take? True breeding plants. How did he get this true breeding plants? Through self-pollination. Through several years of self-pollination, he got, he got plants exactly like that of the parents. That is all the characters of the parents were there in the progeny. So that kind of inheritance is called as stable inheritance. All kind of character in the parent plant is there in the progeny or in the progeny plant is there with the parent. They are the same. So you call that as stable trait inheritance. Such kind of plants are called as true breeding plants. So his experimental uh, uh, example was true breeding garden pea plants. I hope it is clear. So this is the first thing that you all must know. What kind of experimental material did he take? He took true breeding garden pea plant. True breeding means plants having stable trait inheritance. Where they look exactly like their parents. Okay. Now, after that he did his experiments. Regarding the details of the experiments, I will explain to you in the next video. But for now, let me take your attention towards... Why? Because with this garden pea plant, he became the father of genetics. Okay, behind that, there are some reasons of his, for his success. One thing, one and the most important thing is, whatever experiments he had done, he made a clear statistical analysis for it and he applied mathematical logic. In the earlier years, Applying mathematics to biology was very, very rare. But then he attempted that. He used that technique. He did statistical analysis of his experiments. And for that he applied mathematical logic to come to some conclusions, to come to some generalizations. He applied mathematical logic. Next one is he had used a large sampling size. I'll explain to you regarding sampling size. Now I'll explain regarding sample, sampling size and all. And uh, when I explain to you in uh, regarding the experiments in the next video, this point will be made more clear. But then you should understand he had taken many, many, many number of samples. Many plants he took, not with just 2, 3, 10, 20 or 60 plants, but he had taken many, many plants, numerous plants. And he did this experiment for see. 7 years and the sampling size was also so large for 7 years. Then he experimented things for successive successive generations. Not for 1, 2, 3, 4 but for 7 years he kept on experimenting with this garden plant and he took successive generations for this. Next he concentrated his experiments always on two opposing traits. Even if it was a large sampling size, he concentrated only on two opposing characters. Two opposing characters means, see, he took two garden pea plants. Okay. The two garden pea plants looked exactly the same. Okay. But then, only one character was different among these two. One plant was tall, another plant was dwarf. So, he took a true breeding tall plant and in another set he took a true breeding dwarf plant. All of the characters in these two plants are same. They have the same flower color, they have the same pod shape, pod color, seed shape, seed color. All these things are same in them. But what was different? Their height was different. One was a tall plant, another was a dwarf plant. So, here... Two opposing trait. What is the trait here? The trait or the character is height. Okay. The trait or the character is height and it was opposing. One was tall, one was dwarf. Similarly, another trait that he took was both the plants were tall. Both the plants had the same pot shape, pot color, everything. But flower's color was different. One had a white flower, one had a purple flower. Okay, 
Likewise, he took seven opposing traits. So, seven into two, fourteen characters. So, always he took opposing traits for his experiments. And he concentrated on that. Regarding experiments, how he did, it will be coming in the following video very soon. But for now, just understand, Gregor John Mendel, regarded as father of genetics, he did experiments on true breeding plants of garden pea plant for seven years. Scientific name of garden pea plant is Pisum sativa. And the reasons for his success because he took, uh, he did statistical analysis and he applied mathematical logic to it. He used a large sampling size which gave credibility to his data. He also did this experiment for successive generations which gave confirmation and which and through which he could come to some generalizations, some general rules of inheritance. And then he always used two opposing traits for his experiments. Regarding the experiment, we'll, we'll come soon. We'll, we'll, we'll be together soon in the, in the coming video. Thank you for now.